So now I'd like to get into the evolution of web development. So in 1990, this was the birth of the web. Sir Tim Berners-Lee invents the World Wide Web, and it's literally just information on a page. And that's, you can share, you know, like your news or whatever, and it's just text, that's all you really have. In 1995, JavaScript's introduced, which is a programming language. Now you can have little counters and calculators and different widgets that you can add to your web pages to act as tools for your users. But everything still looked kind of, you know, 1990-ish, like very clunky. In the 2000s, CSS emerges, and CSS is a styling language for, for the web. <laughs> So now your websites can start looking jazzy, you know, uh, color, fonts, um, you know, adding padding and different things like that. 2004, Web 2.0 comes in, and that's when you start getting your social networks. So you have a actual web application now, not just a website. So you're tying in database and everything there. 2008, HTML5. HTML5 makes it capable to, to write HTML quicker, and it also creates elements that are accessible for, for, you know, ADA, for ADA compliance, so that for like screen readers, um, hearing impaired, visual impaired, those, those syn the syntax in HTML5 is still used today, and it's mainly because it's just better, better structure for ADA. And then 2010, phones, all the mobile devices, like you have to have a responsive website then. 2013, progressive web apps, the ability to actually take your website and have your users save it to their phone and then push notifications to it, almost like it's an application. And then now, 2021 and on, we have AI in web development, and it's, um, it's growing super quick. It's, it's, it's a little scary, but it's also exciting at the same time. So the importance of a well-developed website. Um, how many people here have a website? Yeah, everybody. Yeah, you sort of have to have a website now to, to run a business. Um, but one of the main key points of like having a website really is your first impression. Um, users make a decision whether or not they want to do business with you, believe it or not, in, within the first five seconds. Um, so if, you, if your website's taking too long to load and, and it, it doesn't load under five seconds, or you, your user just doesn't like your website for some reason, they bounce, there's a good chance they're probably not going to come back. So that first impression is really important. It also helps build credibility and trust. 75% of consumers say that they've actually decided to do business with somebody just because their website was nice looking and it was easy to get in touch with somebody and somebody and they was, it was a very predictable process. Like they were, they were able to get in touch and a salesperson contacted them and it was just seamless and there was no pain or headache. Um, so credibility and trust is really good for that. Accessibility um, is very important now uh, to make sure that everybody's included on your website. Hearing impaired, visual impaired. Um, you got to make sure that your text to background color ratios are correct. Um, if you're using videos or animations, all that has to be structured correctly for, um, for ADA compliance. And in some industries, you can actually get fined if you're not ADA compliant. Um, uh, it's um, accessibility, so it's the web content accessibility guidelines. So ADA is, um, it, if, you, if you know like from like architecture or um, interior design, like having like handicap ramps and stuff, that's, I don't know the actual acronym ADA, but it's like American Disability, 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 Disability Act. American Disability Act, is that yeah. cool? Yeah, so, um, but in web it's, it's WCAG, which is the web content accessibility guidelines. And they have different levels, one through 10, um, government sites are usually government. Anything that has to deal with like that sort of thing, like around there, um, you're going to have to have like the highest level of ADA compliance. Otherwise, you can get fined. Um, web, a good website will generate leads for you. It, it should be your biggest sales tool. Um, you should get leads, uh, whether it's top of the funnel lead where customers are just putting in their information to get something cool, or it could be right at the bottom of the funnel, like they're ready to get a quote and get get going. It should be search engine optimized, meaning your website and anywhere else you're posted online uh, should all tie together. And when you, someone search your brand or something related to what you do, it should show up and that's, that's an effective website. And of course, mobile responsiveness. So if your website's not user friendly on mobile, it's not gonna be effective, uh, especially now. So one of the things that uh, I see a lot, and this is when clients come to YoDev and when I partner with agencies, is a lot of people have marketing departments and they have that strategic thinking piece. 
And that's like really a big, a big piece. You gotta have a strategy, you gotta understand your customer avatar. You gotta um, have, a, have an intention with your web development. Um, and you have to have an overall goal of where you're going. Um, but what happens is they lack the technical expertise. And what happens is you end up having maybe like a, a, a marketing person that has a great design background, understands branding, understands how to talk to customers, but the website's slow or um, it, it's not looking the same as their designs and now they're getting all upset and then they gotta go get a freelancer or a, a developer or even hire a full-time developer. Um, what we found is if you take strategic thinking and technical expertise, you want them to overlap and that's where effective web development goes. Uh, happens. Um, you don't want to just have the strategy piece or the technical piece. You want to have both, and that's sort of where we fill the gap. Um, we have strategic thinkers on the team that can help come up with strategies as far as SEO and content creation, but we also have the know-how to work with CMOs and marketing directors to help portray a website and user experience that meets your customer avatar. And then, of course, technical expertise is where we specialize in. So fast-loading websites, backups, no downtime, um, be, the ability to be agile, like if you need to shift really quickly, having that dev team that's really fast and agile is a benefit, especially as you're trying to scale your business. So benefits of a strategic approach. First and foremost, uh, if you're coming in from a strategy point of view, uh, better user experience. So you're gonna have a better experience with, uh, your users are gonna have a better experience with your website. Everything's gonna be intentional, all the touch points, all the way down to you know, that conversion, whether it's, again, a top, top of the funnel conversion where it's like they're, they're kinda of iffy or they're bottom of the funnel, they're ready to get a sales rep on the, on the phone. Um, that whole experience should be thought out and it should be seamless for your users. And then this will improve your conversion rates. And Another part of like this sort of bridges, like it connects with technical expertise, but making sure you're tracking all the touch points and knowing what's working and what's not working. That's how strategy and technical sort of combine, but this, that'll also help improve your conversion rates. If you can see which path a user took, where they got snagged, um, and then make those changes. And if it's, at, if it's at a certain level where it's like, hey, you know, we, we have a lot of ad spend going to this one landing page, but we have this theory that like if we change something, will get better conversion rates. You can do things like A-B testing and, and things like that. So it's like, hey, let's split the traffic and say, okay, yeah, let's try Tim's uh, new col button color idea and new headline, but let's only do half the traffic. And then if Tim's idea wins and you get you know 50% more conversions, you can make that the primary page and then your ad spend will be more optimized. Uh, and then of course, uh, benefits, and this is more geared towards what we do, um, benefits of a strategic approach would be effective SEO. So showing up on the, on the first spot for your top keywords, showing up in rich snippets and in the shop if you're selling things, being shown when, when users search for what, you, what, what, what they're looking for. So if they're searching for a automatic water shutoff valve, our client FlowLogic will show up number one underneath the sponsored and then they'll also show up up here with flow mowing and everything right in the right in the reel. <clears throat> so that's that's one of the benefits of having that strategy in place because you're speaking to your customer and you understand what they're searching for and you're giving what they want from your website. This is the same for a product relative to a service. Uh, product and service, correct? Yes, you 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 can do the same thing for services. Uh, it really just depends on. Um, you know, the research of like what the users are searching and what they're looking for and what you're selling. But yeah, um, so like what, what service do you? Financial planning. Financial planning. So um, financial planners, Winston-Salem, I'm sure that's a big search term, so that's an, a no-brainer. But on a more lower like, or higher funnel, you could, st you could start populating a knowledge base on your website of just every single thing that you could ever think of and start ranking and flowing that traffic to your main landing pages. And that would give you what's called topical authority, which we'll get into in a little bit, where you're an authority over a topic. And then every time anybody searches financial planning, X, Y, Z, your website should come up or in the top and you'll, you'll get that, you know, that traffic. Um, so we talked about strategic approaches to web development. Now, this is where we specialize the most, and that's the technical expertise. So, the first and foremost right now, uh, uh, the importance of a technical expert on the team is efficiency and performance. 
So efficiency meaning like all your processes as far as developing new landing pages or updates to your website to making sure they're tested to deploying it live so that it doesn't break anything. So like we work with a lot of big enterprises and um, when they push something to production, up, and when I say production, I'm talking about the live site, uh, if it, something breaks, like they lose money. So like that whole process has to have a, a pipeline in place. So our developers are working locally and then we have certain test suites that run and all the tests have to pass before it gets up to the staging environment. And then once it's staged, the client can review, maybe update some content here or there. And then once everything's approved from that level, we push the button and it goes live. And then if anything were to break and, and you could know it, you know, you'd know it right away. Like, hey, what's going on? We're losing, like, we're, we're losing conversion. Something's happening. Website's not, like, you know, this, is, this isn't working. We can just roll back in one click and, and get it right back without having to go and do any, you know, manual development or, you know, SSHing into servers and like working frantically. Um, we just click a button and it, it rolls back. So that efficiency meets performance, under five second load speeds, good user experience, um, ensuring that all your data is being collected properly and um, you know, you're able to track that performance. Everything around that is your technical expert. Another thing that's really important to have the, the technical side of things is security and updates. Um, we get a lot of our clients, uh, especially in the smaller business area, their websites get hacked. Um, and if you have good organic traffic from like, you know, on Google, and your website gets hacked, you are pretty much gonna go to zero if you don't get that fixed immediately. Because um, Google will see that you're forwarding their users to malicious web pages and they're gonna just, you're gonna get flagged really hard. So making sure that all your website software is up to date, any hosting infrastructure um, is up to date, and that's what your technical person will help you with. And then this is the, 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 the part that's the most fun for us, and that's scaling right. So. Um, when I talk about scaling, uh, you know, you, most clients, either it's, all, it's a custom system for everybody, it depends, like you have a website, some clients might have a web application, you might even have a mobile application, but at some point when you're trying to hit that critical mass, you're going to run into scaling issues, and if you don't have the right team in place, or that architecture was not built r to scale, you're going to hit, hit bottlenecks, and your website's either not going to load, or you're going to lose tons of revenue or opportunity because you can't handle any more traffic, that's where the technical expert can come in and help you scale and, and also foresee when scaling is going to happen. Like if you're starting to hit bottlenecks in tech debt with your website or your processes, it's probably a good, good opportunity or a good chance to like review everything you're doing. Like, hey, why are we... Why, why are all, our, all these appointments getting canceled? Or why are all these processes not working properly? Why aren't they booking calls? That's probably a good signal to like look at what, what's going on with your website and potentially think about you know, structuring it to scale. So our approach to web development. Uh, so number one, we understand our client objectives. So we have a we have like a, a creative, it's not really a creative brief, it's more of a technical brief with us, but we'll, we'll talk about your target audience, um, what your business objectives are, what you want out of your website, if, if you need additional support, whether it's like a, a scheduling application or third-party software to integrate, things like that. We truly understand exactly what our clients want because we partner with our clients. We're not just a, a shop that you outsource your dev, dev team to. Like we, we sit in on strategic meetings, um, and we bring that technical piece to the table. We design, with, we're de we design with the end user in mind, so we're constantly focused on providing value to your users, um, whereas the, the, old, the old method was, okay, hey, I just wanna serve the client. Um, and sometimes you know, we have to do that when clients like, no, we've gotta do it this way, and then we're okay, well, if it, if it goes wrong, then we could try our way. But <laughs> we're always focused on what your end users want because at the end of the day, you need to be providing value to your end user, which could potentially be your customer. So, um, you know, even if you think the initiatives that you're pushing are like, yeah, this is what we need for, for the business or whatever, but hey, your users aren't saying that. They're looking for a, a tool to help them plan financial planning. And like, if your website has that tool and like you're getting tons of traffic to help them like automatically do a quick little plan um, and then have a call to action after that, that's what your users are looking for. So we should probably think about building that. That's, um, that's like what that means by end so, user in so mind. So you help 
So if somebody comes to you and says, okay, here's what I want, do you kind of say, is there searches or something you can say, hey, you know, if you build a widget, you know, you can say, yeah. that you can help them kind of figure out here's what people are looking for so you can design the with the end user in mind? Exactly, yeah, so they, they come to us and then we can handle some of the research and find out and come up with ideas. Usually at the, at the start, it's just about you know, making your website better. But as you grow and scale, you'll find that you might need to build some custom tools, whether it's to help your, your internal processes and to help that user experience like onboarding process. Or like you were just mentioning, and I, I brought it up as well, building some sort of a tool that maybe like users are searching for. And if you can get all that traffic and get your website to be like the forefront of that tool, um, you can gain leads that way. Put your first name and email in and click generate and then go through a questionnaire and then, you know, you can even make those like very sales oriented, you know, like it's like, like it, it, the outcome's sort of the same for everybody, but now with AI and, and the capabilities of like customizing everything, like you could really make something that's unique. Obviously you want to put disclaimers in there if you're doing financial stuff, but you know, things like that. Your, like, one of the things that came to mind even earlier when you were talking about something bad where you get malware oh yeah it goes, you say people will drop you or whatever yep so obviously you will help the client set up build whatever mm -hmm. website or review that they have but as part of what your company does is continually monitors it like you're yes. a service that that does that yes and you report back to the client as to what's going on, what's effective, what's not effective, that kind of thing. Yes, yes. We, we have, um, so we have a few ways to work with us. You could do, you know, one-off projects. Some clients just pay our, our current hourly rate and just, hey, we need you, and then, okay, we'll, we'll fit you in on the calendar. We have other clients that actually, like, partner with us, and that's what we like to call our clients' partners. And we'll have strategic meetings with them. We'll set up automated reporting and, and things like that. And we'll monitor and maintain the website. And then also we have some services where like some clients that have marketing teams like that, that they use us as an awesome resource. Like, hey, you know, we got all these landing pages that need to come out. Hey, we need to revamp the navigation. You have that dev team there sitting that's like ready to jump on and, and help move your business forward on the web. So are those models pay as you go or do you do like a contract for a year? Or um, we typically start with a, like a, a project to start. So there's usually a need for why our clients want to work with us. Um, if it's just straight up like, hey, yeah, we, wanna, we want you to do some research and analysis from an SEO perspective, do a, a technical analysis that we could do that to get started. And then from there, we can make a plan on what it looks like to, to go forward and work together. Um, but for the most case, like I usually work with marketing directors or CMOs that like have a, a, a need, like they either have a bad experience with a freelancer or they have like a, a team that's outsourcing to like a different country or something and the, res the, the work's coming back shoddy and it's just slow. Um, and they're looking for like, hey, I need an ongoing dev team to, to help keep pushing, keeping our campaigns and our pipeline flowing. Um, and then that's where like we really find a groove, but we also do like just maintenance contracts and we have a, a bunch of different things. I can share some stuff with you if you're interested. I have a quick question for you. Sure. So tell me, is my understanding of SEO correct? I mean, is it really just like ranking for relevant keywords in your niche and obviously ranking as high as possible organically? Is that like what a good SEO is? That's what it is. And um, if you want to hold that question just for a couple minutes, I actually have uh, some slides coming up on it. And then we, we'll, we'll revisit. Uh, if I don't answer it, you can stop me before I move on and I can answer that. But I'm pretty sure it'll answer that for you. Okay. Um, last approach for us is ensuring technical ec excellence. Um, we employ top-notch US-based developers and IT professionals. Um, ranging, like I have uh, developers in Florida. I, I'm originally from New Jersey, so I have some good connects up there that work for me. And then all my full-timers are right here in North Carolina. Uh, here's a success story um, that I'd like to share. So Cantor Power Systems uh, is one of the largest Generac generator installers in the nation. Um, they partnered, recently partnered with Home Depot. Um, we started working with them in 2020, and they, it was, they went right in, similar to what you were just asking for, like they wanted an, engage, an ongoing engagement immediately. They had an agency that was super bloated, and they were, the agency was working with bigger brands, so like Cantor wasn't quite there yet, so they weren't getting the priority and the, um, of what they, what they wanted out of their agency. 
And the marketing director said, hey, you know, I just need web development, um, SEO, like all, all the stuff that a web, web dev shop needs to be able to do. And we came in there um, and now we, we maintain their, their main website. They have a partner microsite that's just isolated for partner referral campaigns. And then they have this web application for, for scheduling. Um, now the programmer on their team, he's a contractor, he, he's responsible for building and pushing the updates, but like our team does the front end work for that, for that application. That's a, an awesome story, great partnership, and we work on them on a daily basis. Um, I, sometimes he, he contacts me a little too much. No. <laughs> um, introduction to SEO. So this is, um, it might answer your question. So SEO stands for Search Engine Optimization. Um, it's essentially the practice of making sure that your website and your web assets are showing up on online searches like Google, Bing, and yeah, even Yahoo. They're still users searching on Yahoo. Um, and it's changed over the course of, you know, like it, it, it started like Google 2000-ish, early 2000s. Back then you could just load keywords into the, I don't know if anybody Remind, remembers that, but in the footer you could just hide and like load a bunch of like keyword terms and you could rank really easily. Of course Google learned that that's you know, a, a way of, to prevent that. Um, today it's, a, it's really, um, it's complex in a way that, that Google's algorithm is so smart that it, it knows that you're keyword stuffing or you're trying to work keywords in, like, like you, you, you read your, your article and it's like there's like well, if you if you're looking for financial planner WSNC, like you know, like it's like it's like nah, that's not going to work. And it, it it really doesn't matter anymore about like stuffing those keywords. It's really about making sure your users are finding what they're looking for. Google's algorithm follows the EAT method um, acronym, which is experience, authority, and trust. So your website and any materials you put out online, whether it's YouTube, Instagram, LinkedIn, you need to be able to demonstrate experience, authority, and trust. So experience meaning, hey, we've been in the business for 20 years, we know a thing or two, um, here's, here's some success stories of where we've had a good experience with a client. Uh, authority, meaning that you're talking in a manner where you are the expert, um, so like, so that as your as the clients or customers are reading your content like they they believe wholeheartedly that you know exactly what you're talking about and then trust showing off reviews awards things like that 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 show the trust signals google's going to reward that for with you now uh, my business coach he's a marketing person and he he likes to add one more to it which is expertise so not only experience, authority, and trust, but if you can demonstrate expertise, and expertise meaning like a knowledge base maybe where you're given tutorials or more technical information. Like if you're, a, if you're doing something with home services, maybe you're a plumber, like recording, actually doing like something like technical just to show that expertise and show why you chose a certain solution, that's becoming a, a, a rank factor now. Is like not only having your experience, authority, and trust, but also demonstrating expertise in some way, shape, or form. Usually in the form of like a blog or a YouTube channel or something like that. That like is really you know showing off what you can do and, and how well you know a topic. So basically, you're saying you really got to get out of you have to get out of your website in essence. You do have to get out of your way. With SEO, you sort of have to be everywhere. Um, and some of the benefits here, well, we'll get into the benefits. I'll answer your question, Bob, but, but yeah, you have to get, you're not just on the website. The website is, is, is your home base. So like, that's where like, you want the users to come to your website because you control the traffic, you can see the data, um, you, like, that's where you're making your conversions, but all the other channels are just ways to demonstrate expertise, experience, authority, and trust in any different you know, so, way. So is, I know, Corey does a lot of Twitter, right? Yeah, and that's what I was asking. Really. So yeah, so is Twitter, YouTube, is anyone better than the other, LinkedIn, all that other stuff, or is it just kind of like a conglomeration? <laughs> I wouldn't say anything's better than, like one platform's better, but I would say that in some cases for your business, one platform could be better. So. Do you have a question around? Yeah, I do. So I guess the question was going to be like, for example, so if I have like a YouTube channel and a Twitter and, and they're all under my personal name, Corey Gann, and then I have like mm -hmm. CoreyGann.com, which is not active yet. 
But so you're saying that like by me having those social media properties that have been around for a while that have a following, are you saying that my, my website will have a better chance yes. of ranking organically? Because, yes. I guess because the algorithm can tell that like, hey, this Twitter and this website, like same thing. Oh yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly. So when you search Yo Dev on Google, I mean, you'll see our website, number one, and then you'll see LinkedIn, Instagram, because that's where we're hanging out most of the time. And then um, you'll start seeing my personal stuff come up. And, and that's what you want. You want like when you search your brand, you want to see all your, all your avenues. And then like you'll see like listings. So like that's, <clears throat> when we get into some of the tactics of SEO, I'll talk about off-page SEO where like finding directory listings for your industry where you need to be listed on. Like have you ever like searched for a service or something? And then the first few search results, it's like top 10 financial planners in Winston-Salem. These are directory listings that you want to get listed on because the, those top, there's like, one, two, three spots on Google, they're getting tons of traffic and having just having your name listed on there is gonna you know, boost your traffic, boost your credibility because you get to link that, link that listing back to your website, Those which backlinks, backlinks will, will juice your SEO because it, it, that's what builds authority. Like, so like um, if you have a, a lot of high profile websites linking back to your website, that's gonna boost your, your SEO. What do you need to, I mean, one of our things, like just as an example, okay. the Triad Business Journal does, you know, top 50 new companies, yep. top family company, blah, blah, blah. Oh, yeah. Well, we kind of take the approach that we like to fly under the radar on some type of stuff. Okay. I don't necessarily want somebody to see exactly what I'm doing to invite them into my world. Well, then if you have a specific like type of client or customer you're looking for and you want to stay a little more hidden, you can. But if you're looking to just be found immediately by everybody, like getting on those press releases and connecting with journal, journal, uh, journalists and stuff is going to be important for that. But since you're trying to fly under the radar, your, your whole strategy might be a little different. Like you might be like, what, what type of clients do you work with? Uh, mostly industrial. Okay, so do you know how to get in touch with a potential prospect for your for 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 your company? Like, are they are the founders or the people that you need to the decision makers? Are they on LinkedIn, for instance? Yeah, I mean, so I LinkedIn would for you, LinkedIn would probably be the best. So like connecting with that decision maker and then having somebody do like cold outreach to try to you know book a call with them to talk and, and see how you can help each other. And then once you have that that like unique connection list of like people that are like your your target customer, then you can start writing articles and stuff on LinkedIn that they would be interested in and linking back to your website from LinkedIn. And those articles, they won't really, they're not gonna really show up like with the Triad Business Journal and stuff. It's gonna sort of stay on LinkedIn. Like if you really, dive deep in Google, you might find them. But like, if you want to keep that, you know, that, uh, that approach where you're sort of flying under the radar, that could be a, a tactic that you might want to look into. There's a tons of agencies out there that help generate leads on LinkedIn or higher, where it's a higher ticket sales and you need to connect with like decision makers like that. We use LinkedIn uh, to, to generate leads because, you know, that's where all the marketing directors and uh, marketing officers are hanging out usually. So so some of the uh, key benefits of SEO, driving organic traffic, and I'll, I'll talk about these images here in a minute, but um, driving organic traffic, that's the, the number one uh, benefit. Um, there's a little bit of a cost in the beginning um, and a little bit to maintain, but once you get it going, um, it's really hard to stop and it's, it's free traffic. You're not paying ad spend per click or an ad agency to optimize your your ads your you know your ad spend yeah it's just they're just coming they're finding you for all the terms and and um types of content that you want your customer to read uh so that's why it's probably one of the biggest investments for your business it's gonna but that seems like that's the majority of all the approach i mean there's email invites to that you know multiple times a day sometimes for they're they're the point that you just made that, that they're just trying to um, help with the words. They're just trying to help with the, with the spend elements and pay for click. Yep. It seems like that's, that's the majority of the approach that I'm getting. Yep. That's what everybody goes towards. Uh, I've grown my business without doing any advertising and a lot of my startup clients like um, I mean I, I have very small businesses on, on our on our client um, roster as well. 
but a lot of them we don't like I don't do paid ads so if they're working with if they want paid ads I have a professional that specializes in just paid ads like they don't do every everything else they just do paid ads and I usually recommend paid ads after you have a solid organic traffic uh, you know build up and you have your, your you really need to have your sales process tightened down because like you, it's going to be like just burning cash on fire if you're getting all this traffic and then you're not converting so like I feel like um, having that process in place having a good organic steady traffic uh, flow into the website first is is a much better way to utilize your money and your time and efforts in marketing before you go and you drop you know I mean I have that it, you know I'm not gonna say how much they spend but like it's a lot of money the canter power systems but like they went through a lot of iterations of their website before they ramped up their spend to like because like they figured out exactly how like how much it costs per appointment and that's what the ad spend specialist will help with but getting to that point and you know seo and how your website's built and how, how if it can handle like getting a hundred thousand users in a week like all of that's where we help out but yeah i definitely recommend investing in something like this or something a little more organic before you start dropping ad spend. Because if you, you need to figure out the touch points that your user's taking to, to make a sale. And once you, you figure that out, then, you, then it's predictable. Because if you, can, if you can drive a certain type of user to your website, you know what the conversion rate is, you can kind of estimate how many appointments are gonna be booked and then how many sales are gonna be made. Andrew, so you know, what Kathy told me uh, with Novex, uh -huh. she goes, what Andrew did is he looked at our competition. Oh, right? yeah. And, he, and I'm not sure if you're going to get to that. Yeah, yeah we, we'll get to that. Okay. Yep. Yeah, we, yeah we, can, we can spy on the competition. We can find out how much organic traffic they're getting, what keywords they're ranking for, um, and then also how much spend, like how much they're spending on advertising so you can get an idea of how much they're, they're spending. I'm going to finish out this uh, benefits slide here. Um, better user experience. So since Google is focused on performance and, effic and like efficiencies in your website, it's going to improve your user experience. So load times, you're not going to have elements shifting around. Like that's 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 called a cumulative layout shift with Google, and that's a big red flag. Like that'll that'll you know dock your website. Um, so like if you have you ever been to a website where it loads? And then you're going to scroll and you see something you're about to click and like the website shifts around. That's all the elements are coming in late. Um, that's a cumulative layout shift. And that's, that's a big red flag for Google. So you're improving that user experience with good SEO. Oh, wow. All right, 40 minute mark. <laughs> um, keeping up with your competition uh, to talk on what Bob just said. So it does involve researching your competition, what they're doing well, what they're doing that's not working, uh, and then building trust and credibility. So you know, uh, we do urge, we don't go out and get, help you get reviews or build that credibility, but we do, like, we always remind our clients, like, every time I get on a call, I'm like, hey, did you get any more reviews yet? And it's like, oh, we forgot, we get, go get some reviews. Well, you need so to. So, you're talking about reviews, and uh, <laughs> what we do is one of Terry's opportunity or problem or whatever challenge is getting, getting online reviews. If you're true, yeah. Online, you see Terry it's just the online reviews. Yeah. So this is specifically Yeah, you need those online reviews to get that boost that trust credibility and you have to also have online online reviews on multiple platforms. So and find out where your competitors are getting those reviews. Like for us for instance and I'm I'm really bad at 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 this particular platform but it's called Clutch and it's a um, platform for like creative agencies, developers, software shops um, and it's a, it's a really high credible uh, review platform. We're coming up with a strategy to start getting those. And it's a little harder to get the clients to fill these out. They're like longer form reviews. So like, you know, some of these platforms like Trustpilot, I don't know if you ever heard of them, but like these are like, like credible sources to get reviews, but they just, they're a little harder to get. So you really have to make sure that you're giving, you're presenting it to your client in the right way at the right time. Usually, you know, one of the things my business coach told me and it has been working is, uh, as soon as you get done delivering your product or service and the customer is ecstatic, that's the best time. So if you have some kind of a email to send them or like, a, you know, here, here's a link or whatever you can do, like get them while they're really excited about your brand because that's when they'll write the review. If you wait a couple months, um, yeah, good, there's a good chance they're not going to. So uh, essential SEO tactics, um, keyword research, topical authority and content creation, on-page SEO, off-page SEO, and technical SEO. 
I'm going to touch on uh, each one a little bit, um, but you know, I'm going to really focus in on topical authority because that's the most that's the latest strategy that is really driving organic growth for for everyone who's utilizing it. But keyword research is the process of just using tools. There's free tools out there too if you want to check it out. Uh, Trends.google.com. You can search in what you think your users are typing into Google, um, and it'll give you trends and it'll give you you know, what's popular. And you can actually isolate it from like Google search to YouTube search if you're doing YouTube videos, things like that. Trends.google.com. So it's like a subdomain. Yep, and that, that's a really good tool. Um, so yeah, it gives you some research ideas. And there's obviously paid tools that give you really robust like uh, how difficult it is to rank for these terms and what the what the uh, what people are paying for per click to rank for these terms and you can figure all that out and that's a part of the the process is picking the right keywords topical authority and content generation um, topical authority is basically making your brand or company an authority on a specific topic set so I, I'm, I'm just using financial planning because it's, it, that was a, one of the examples brought up. But you could start with financial planning and then you could utilize some of these tools to help generate some ideas on like what people are asking in Google, what, what search terms they're searching. And then these tools will actually, um, this is a good example, it'll take your, your root keyword and it'll break it down into what I like to call a, a content cluster and it'll create subtopics that all support that main keyword that you're trying to become an authority on. And if all this, all this is linking correctly, and a lot of this just happens organically, like you don't wanna, you don't wanna overthink the strategy. Like some people like really overthink, like, oh, well this, post one needs to link to two, three, post three needs to link to four, five, and then they all gotta drive back to your main landing page. But like really just if, if you have a content calendar going and you have somebody on this that knows what they're doing, um, it really happens organically. Like you say, oh, well, this will be a good one to link here. This will be a good one to link there. And as long as all these subtopics are so in some way, shape, or form linking back to that main page, like the financial planning page that's going to try to convert people, that'll start really ranking your site. Um, and it's really a, a, a volume game, and it really depends on how, how, how often your, your top competitors are, are posting and publishing content. So, um, so does it just come down? I mean, like I know... And a lot of influencers I follow, like even big guys like Gary Vaynerchuk, yep. Kevin Robbins, like on their website, like every single one of them has a blog, thousands of articles. Oh yeah, years. yeah, they're doing yeah. it. But is that the main? But is that like the main way to really rank for some of those keywords? Is to just like have a blog on where you you go to like subtopics within your niche and just consistently posting about those subtopics using the keywords you want to rank for. Is that um, pretty much the strategy? That is that is the strategy. Um, but more importantly, as if you change your mindset as you're helping to, to facilitate these projects and create this content, you have to just keep thinking like, I, I don't care that much about the keywords that much. Like it, it's a topic, but I just want to give as much value to my user as possible. If you can focus on value um, and giving some sort of value and making it valuable, you can't just go into ChatGPT and say, hey, write me this article ranking for this keyword and just go. It's going to be very dry. It's going to be very AI-like generated. And yeah, you will start to rank. But what's going to happen is, um, like, and we, we've seen this because I played around with my wife's blog that messed around when ChatGPT first came out. We got traffic right away. Like It was like almost instant. And then after a little bit, it started to go down. And it was like, well, what's going on? Oh, people are bouncing. Like They're getting to the website and then they're reading. It's like, oh, it's just dry, boring content. And they're leaving. So um, what I'm going to show a little later is uh, some prompts that we've constructed to get higher quality content. But at the end of the day, you still need to go through a, a manual review process to make sure it's as best possible. Um, but yeah, if focus on value and then use some tools to help generate some topic ideas. Uh, I'm going to briefly go through these real quick. On-page SEO, optimizing your pages that are on your current website. Uh, off-page SEO is the directory listings we were talking about, social channels, things like that that are off of your website. And then technical SEO, uh, speed, mobile friendliness, um, making sure that it can be indexed and read properly, making sure all your links aren't broken, things like that like the, from a technical standpoint. So our approach to SEO, um, I'm going to go over a, a brief um, it's, it's, it's a top level SEO discovery report. So we do offer what this is our first, this is like our gateway into working with SEO with us. 
and it's called our SEO discovery report. Uh, we're going to do a technical analysis, like a, an in-depth technical analysis on your website. We're going to see how it's performing uh, against Google's core web vitals, which is your page speed, your cumulative layout shifting, um, your overall user experience, all that stuff. We're going to do that. We're also going to use some SEO audit tools to, to see um, if, your, if your pages are structured correctly, so if the metadata is structured correctly, um, if links are broken. Um, HTML to text ratio, like you want to make sure you have the right words to, to your sections, like you know, um, you don't want to have too little. Uh, competitor analysis, that's what Bob brought up. We, we take up to five of your competitors that, that you're really interested in seeing what they're doing. And we see what their keywords are, um, how much organic traffic they're getting, uh, how much they're paying on ad spend, just so you know, um, because that can kind of help like, oh wow, they're, they're paying $15,000 a month in ads, like <laughs> they must be doing something that can afford that. Um, and we'll get into actually what they're doing on their website. So like what types of content they're posting, where they are on social media, and just kind of give you an overall idea of like how your competitors look online versus you. And then from those two analysis, we're going to take a key. We're going to do keyword planning, and we're going to we're going to put the plan together to start ranking for what we like to call um, it's the low hanging fruit keywords, basically. So they're easy to rank for. They have a decent amount of traffic, and they can be easy wins in the beginning. And once you start winning on those easy keywords, then you can start working towards some of the ones that get a lot of traffic. But you, it's way easier to go for those lower keyword difficulty um, terms. And then we'll put a plan to execute together. And the, and the plan will consist of, and it really depends on where you are. I mean, um, you might have a marketing team that does content and we, we just handle the technical aspect of things. So like, you know, making sure the website's fast. If your marketing team needs us to add a new page or update something and just be that dev team, we do that. But then we also do a full turnkey solution where we're helping to generate content ideas for you um, we, we help either consult with somebody on your team on how to properly use AI to generate content and, and, and the, those processes, what they look like. We also can even generate the, the first drafts for you and hand it off to whoever needs to review it. And um, you know, we'll actually, we'll do the fact checking and stuff. Like we'll do the manual human editing at the end, but obviously whoever's leading the project, uh, whether it's a marketing director or an expert on the, in, the, in the topic, um, they should be doing the final look over on that. Um, so again, Ian, he was the one who came with us with the SEO discovery report. He actually recently came to us with that. We started doing SEO with him back in 2019. Um, his website was not responding. Like they were starting to grow really fast. They just got some investment to take it to the next level. And the website had tons of tech debt. Um, users would hit the website and it would just give you a little like, it's like a, a, a page that looks like it's all like dead or something. I don't know if you've ever seen that, that page before, but constantly getting that. Um, and if you look here, it says 608 organic traffic per month, January 2019. And you can see they were pretty strong, and, but then they started to go down because they were growing and they were doing some other things as well to grow. Um, as like They were building their sales processes and they were using tons of plugins. They were actually using the website as a tool to sell, which I don't recommend. Um, and that, that those sa the salespeople in the website constantly doing things, tracking phone orders and stuff, that was actually what was bogging them down the most. So we helped them get a better process in place for that first and foremost. But we also migrated them to a modern cloud host which kept their website up and was able to scale with them. In one year, they went up, so that's January 2020 now, they went up to 13, 16 in traffic per month. And now today, they're still working with us. And I just also, they're, they're almost at 3,000 per month in, in organic traffic. But one of the things I wanted to mention was, after we did the cloud hosting migration, he got us on a retainer just to help out like a maintenance contract. And then he paid us per project for the SEO. So that first year, we, we did page speed optimization, we got it SEO sound, and then we taught them you know, what types of content to be posting. Like we helped them out with their knowledge base. That was like one of the big things, like, like uh, how, to, how to install the project that, or product. That's what customers are looking for. So him and his team were just doing that on a, on a routine basis over the year. And now he hasn't really paid us for SEO since then. Um, he just still pays us for dev work and stuff. But um, today, like I said, almost 3,000 and then he wanted that discovery report. Now he's ready to ramp it up even more. 
And yeah, it, it, like I said, he, he, he only paid SEO that first year and then just kind of kept us on board to, to keep everything maintained. <clears throat> All right, so now the final topic, probably the most exciting, uh, artificial intelligence in web development and SEO. So I tried to make this, this is so new for us that like, this is just what's in my head. <laughs> so I just put this out here to try and explain it as best as I can. But um, we're using AI for help with keyword planning. So um, you can use it to help generate keyword ideas. We have some prompts that can, you know, like if you feed it the correct information, it'll come up with some really good keyword ideas. And then you can cross check those keyword ideas with Google Trends or some paid SEO tools to find out which ones are gonna be the best for you. Um, so we use it for, for keyword planning. We use it for automation scripts. So if you ever have any tasks in your business that could be automated, maybe it's a form to a sheet to a doc that exports as a PDF and sends to somebody, all that can be automated. Um, and we use it to automate our Google Workspace. Um, so we can pull in some um, error codes from your website and populate it on a spreadsheet and then have the spreadsheet format like red if there's anything bad. So like we're using it for that versus just having manual uptime checks that give us notifications and we gotta go check it. We're actually going and pulling all the, all the URLs and then it's telling us the error codes and, whether, and status codes and, it, it immediate, and, and we get the notification. So not only are we getting the notification, but we also get exactly what's wrong with it. So that's just one example of how we're using some scripts. And we've actually used ChatGPT to help develop the, the automation scripts. In the past, I'd have one of my developers who's supposed to be focusing on providing value to our clients working internally, and it comes out you know, shoddy because they're balancing work. But now I can just have them write a script with ChatGPT's help and it saves tons of time and then they can focus on the client work, which is what, what our main mission is. And then the thing that I'm gonna get into as an example is the content generation piece. So you can use AI tools to generate content. Um, it's not gonna be ready to publish content, but it's gonna be like, I would say 80% of the way there and then you gotta take it the rest of the way. Hey, do you have a question? So you have ChatGPT, but I use Bard a lot. Oh yeah, yeah, Bard's, Bard's good because he's, He's connected to the internet, so. Yeah, I mean, so I, mean I, I use Bard all the time. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I use Bard more Bard's than cool. ChatGPT. How do you spell Bard? B-A-R-D. It's, it's, yeah. it's a Google. Yeah, and if you have a Google workspace, you do have to, you have to add, enable it in your admin console, but. Yeah, I mean, that's. But yeah, Bard. Yeah, we chose, uh, like, we're in on ChatGPT um, because, like, I don't know, I found that the, the, the creativity, especially of ChatGPT 4, is like and like the complexity that you can do is really great. I know the information's outdated, so like if you need to if you need to give it information ahead of time, you do have to like go here. I want I want you to learn this, learn that, and you can yeah, like four is paid. huh? Four is paid. I think it's is that twenty bucks a month. Is that, is that yeah, it's twenty bucks a month. Um, is it worth it? Oh, yeah, I mean, uh, hundred percent worth it. Corey, they just added. Uh, uh, what, I forget what we call it, code integration. Yeah. So you can take pictures now and make some video and all the stuff. Really? So they just added the beta version. Yeah. But um, yeah, the paid version is definitely worth it. Um, you'll see that like when you use ChatGPT 3.5, the free version, um, it it comes out. It's okay. It's really, but it's like really dry and very just like robotic. Like you can tell it's AI. With ChatGPT 4, if you if you prime it properly. You, it is, it is amazing. They probably need to get used to it in the first one, though. Huh. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, play around with it on the first one. Um, it, it, it can learn. It can learn your style. Your, your style. Oh, yeah. is, is there is there a way to feed GPT four like, for example, hey, analyze my Twitter feed, all seven thousand of my tweets, and then compose a draft in my like my job? Is that does it have the ability to analyze code the code yeah. thing that he's talking about? Code well. nets. Uh, yeah, yeah, because I just put the, the Bitcoin chart and all the other crypto charts into it, and it created this big, huge thing, which I couldn't do it before, and now I did it through, I'm still playing with it because I've only been using it a couple of days. Is that like a plugin? Like the code? It's just, it's just their new base. It's like a thing you enable. You have to tell it to create code, and then it creates this, this you know, you know, create video or whatever, but I had to create a chart, so it looks like this. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool. So it... it it can connect to the internet and do certain things, um, but for the most part, right now, like I feel comfortable talking about it in the way that we're using it, which is like, 
the processes that I would have to use, like do with a, a copywriter, like here's, here's the background of us, here's the tone we want, here's the writing style, um, and then do you have any questions for me and, and you know, get questions from the copywriter. I, I'm using it like that because that's where we're getting the best results and that's where we're saving the most time. So like, I don't have to hire a copywriter for our, for our website and you know, wait a week and then get it back and then send them a draft and then wait. Like, I, get, I get the first draft like, in really high quality within seconds. Um, yeah, so it's pretty awesome. Um, so this is the this is our our sequence that we use, and this seems to be working really well for us. Um, and you can see here that it's formatted a certain way, and this is all very intentional and, and lots of trial and error. But first, we give it a background. By the way, I call this prompt the priming pr pr prompt. So you're priming ChatGPT. But first, we give it a background. Uh, in this case, I'm saying you're a technical copywriter who specializes in writing with white papers, case studies, and blog posts for tech companies and IT companies. You're tasked with writing a success story for YoDev's client, FlowLogic. The content should be structured like a web page and heading with headings, listings, etc. It should be more than 750 words. This next top, this next style tab right here. Um, I actually learned this from a conference I went to um, last week. Uh, it's called DigiMarcon. The speaker there, uh, I apologize, I don't have her name or company information, but she sort of explained how, and, and our ChatGPT users in here might know, when, you, when you're using ChatGPT, it tends to use a lot of like similes and like these weird off, put, and you can just tell right off the bat, that's ChatGPT doing that. Well, this style right here, you should write in an assumative manner about things never overly stating or, your, or experience using information indirect, non-ear ways from, a, from an effect, not directly. So this whole little section right here and then all the way down to oh, your writing style, that's, that's uh, on my prompt template, I have that highlighted so you can change that. But this right here, we keep that because that actually prevents those weird similes and those weird like Shakespeare-like adjectives that sometimes ChatGPT uses. Um, and then we talk about tone. Uh, so your tone's optimistic, humble, inf informative, straightforward, and friendly. That's obviously something you can change. And then, huh? Yeah, I'm actually, uh, so at the end, there's a, there's a web page you can go to, and I can, I'm gonna send, I can send you the slides and this prompt template so that you get that. Um, yep, no problem. Confirmation is very important. So during these, <laughs> what happened there? I took a picture, but I knew it was being filmed. Oh uh, yeah, 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 that's gonna, it's gonna go on, <laughs> it's gonna go on YouTube. <laughs> it's gonna go on YouTube too, so uh, you know, if, if, if you, you know, fill out your information, I'll send you the YouTube video when it goes live if you're in interested. Um, so confirmation is very important. At the end of each of these prompts, you're gonna wanna confirm that ChatGPT understands and you also want to tell it, don't write yet, because I have more requirements. And you might attest to this. If you just start writing in things and like you're and you hit enter, it's gonna just go and just do its best guess. But if you have this confirmation prompt at the end of your first prompt, it won't do it. So how do you get it to go after you've written it? Then the note. Oh, we'll get there. I know you're excited. <laughs> <laughs> but you, know, but you, know, you don't actually physically write confirmation, you just put do you understand? I have more requirements. Uh, I actually, I, so I keep these labels in here. Um, I yeah, I do keep the labels in here. And that's how they were doing it at that marketing conference I went to. So I'm, I'm, I'm gonna keep that. Um, then the next prompt is number two, uh, summary prompt. So this is where you, you're gonna have to summarize it. Um, and in my case, I'll have a team member or something do it, but, uh, and then I'll go in and I'll edit it and make sure that it, or we're hitting all the points I wanna hit. But, um, and this can be as long as you can get it to be. Uh, I don't know the exact word count that ChatGPT allows, but we've, we've gotten it to where we've actually pasted in entire web pages and say, hey, this is an inspiration. Do not plagiarize, do not copy this, but this is the, the type of style and structure we're going for. Like if it's like the top ranking page that you're trying to compete with. Um, so you can put that in there. And I've also found that um, it works if like it's, if it if it errors out and it says too much too too much space too much white space, you can actually take that entire 
web page and put it through a tool to remove white space and it compresses it down and it works just fine as well. So you could just, you know, inject it right in just like it's like a data blob right into the into <coughs> chat GPT. Um, so you get the summary and then again, confirmation, same, same thing from previous. Uh, third prompt is audience and objectives. So we're gonna talk about the target audience here. Uh, our target audience is founders, marketing directors, creative directors looking to hire a dev team to help with their website or web applications. Uh, the objective, this is actually an important one that you don't, like I, I, you can add to this, but I, I would keep exactly what's here. Uh, the goal of this success story, um, you can change it to post, article, whatever, but is to demonstrate experience, expertise, authority, and trust. So if you remember previously, um, that's what the Google algorithm's looking for, so we're gonna make sure that it's demonstrating those things. Oh yeah, yeah, this is the funny part. The tone should be positive and the reading level should be fifth grade. So we found that the fifth grade reading level for our users is really good, but if, for most consumers, third grade. Like that's, that's what these are agents, these creative agencies that, that like focus on content strategy and stuff, they say, yeah, third grade reading level, because people are scrolling and they're trying to move quick and as soon as they start seeing some complex structures and things like that, like they, they get sort of overwhelmed and just scroll to the bottom and hit back. But like if they can read it and it flows and like it's easy to read, it, they're gonna potentially get to the end. And the, the important part is keeping them on the website too so that Google doesn't see that they're bouncing. So that Google sees, oh, this website's giving them what they want. Uh, and then again, we got, I forgot the confirmation here, but again, do not write, please add more requirements. Now this is uh, prompts four and five because I'm gonna give it a prompt and then it's gonna give me questions back and then I'm gonna answer the questions. So um, I ask, do you have any questions for me to make this success story the best it can be? And then ChatGPT spit out questions for me to answer and you can see, I'll, I'll read one of them as an example. Can you provide any specific examples of the challenges FlowLogic faced while scaling their e-commerce site? Understanding the precise nature of the obstacles can give a more dramatic context to the solutions YoDev provided. So then I gave it, you know, real examples of challenges and I went through the and answered the questions to the best of my ability. So did you answer the questions right underneath that? No, I, I copy this. I recommend doing it in a Google Doc because like, you, you know, preparing it and also you can delegate to somebody if somebody's doing it for you. But um, like you, you I will, some, most of the times I'll just copy it and put it in the next you know, the next chat bubble and just answer it right there. Okay. So, um, but yeah, uh, I definitely recommend taking it off and, and working on it so you don't, you know, mess up any of the prompts. And also, um, I, I didn't mention this, but ChatGPT only allows you, I think it's 30 prompts every three hours. So we got this high quality content in um, five prompts. So if you think about it, five prompts over the course of three hours, like you can get a lot of content out of this. Um, so then, once, once we're done, I just say, please write the success story. So now ChatGPT is writing the success story. And since I prompted to say, hey, format it like a web page, um, we got the H1 up here, we got eight, we got heading twos, we got paragraphs. And it's, it, it, like, I, I read it through and I was like, wow, this is like pretty much there. So I would just take it now into Google Docs rework it and then you can also take some of the stuff back to chat gpt and have them re like have them re-elaborate on things and go into more detail and so like you know almost like it's a second <laughs> almost like it's a second draft so like second draft comes through and it's like hey i want you to go into more detail here you know show some some actual experiences of why they called for help and then it could turn it could turn this into maybe three paragraphs with some bullets and stuff. If you tell it like, hey, and I want bullets, like it can do all that. Um, so GPT-4 is a pretty much a requirement for that, for that high quality? From what, I, from what I found, yes. I tried GPT-3.5 using the same prompts and it's just not as good. Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, now you wanna know, you wanna know where it gets expensive. It gets expensive when you use the API and you're creating a web app that allows your clients to do all this and you gotta rate the limits and stuff. That's where it's gonna get expensive. But like for you just doing it yourself, it's not a big deal. Put your tag on, tag on now, the white knight. Oh, uh, I changed that. I hate, I hated that. I hated that. <laughs> I did change it though. <laughs>
it gets very creative. Um, I, th I think part of that prompt was like joyful, playful, like write in like a, a give story examples. Like it's very uh, easy to read content, that's for sure. So I like to share this um, and then we're almost done here. Um, so I wanted to share our content creation workflow and how we do it. Um, so here's YoDev right here. We're helping put, in, put we're gonna help put in processes into your research area so that you're getting the proper keywords, you know, automatically populating on sheets that are formatting it to show you your highest possible keywords. And then we'll also help, we can put together a content calendar for you and your team so that you can start populating content on your, on your website and wherever else. Um, we can also help implement automation scripts wherever that um, needs to play in, whether it's automating reporting, automating tracking, uh, lead tracking, all that type of stuff and, and isolating it all to like a Google Sheet or a Microsoft um, Excel Sheet. And then the content creation piece. Um, we have a couple clients that we, we do all this 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 entire service right here like the the ai content creation that ties into our seo and web development services like we actually will help with everything um, but in most cases we're getting the groundwork done from the technical side of things and getting everything set up and then we're showing the marketing teams or whoever's the point person how to generate the content themselves uh-oh low battery oh we're, we're towards the end so it's okay um oh cool we're good and then um you know, once they generate that content, we obviously recommend an expert review. Make sure that fact checks are good. Um, the expert, like, and I say expert because a lot of the clients we work with have that expert on the team. Like, it's like the, the maybe he's the best salesperson or the best ops person, or she's like the marketing guru of the team and she knows everything about your products. Well, um, that person needs to have the have eyes on the content before it goes out. Um, so, CMO, wh whoever, whoever that person is. Uh, and then it's published. And then you can, uh, since you're producing so much content now, you can start just scheduling things out and just having it like, you know, like be ahead of the game and just have things scheduled. Um, now, obviously there's a lot, a lot of other stuff going on. There's social media, there's all this other stuff that we don't touch, but when it comes to content creation, website automation, SEO, that's like where we sort of bridge the gap with all that stuff and keeping everything technical and scaling like when you get to that size. Before we get into Q&A, just some acknowledgements. Bob, Catalyst Board, thank you. I had a great time. I hope everybody uh, got some cool information and insights from this presentation. And the man behind the camera, I know we've got a pretty awesome rig back there. Uh, Micah Brown Media uh, specializes in corporate video, video marketing. Uh, you can even help with some short form content, things like that on social platforms and photography. So he's a, a one-stop media shop. He's also setting up our data center too because we're getting into YouTube videos and content creation and I found that wow, storing all this stuff sort of sucks. So, he, so he's, uh, he's helping create a, a home cloud using a, a, a NAS network attached storage. We're gonna have it all stored there and then um, yeah, we'll, we'll keep our data ourselves instead of having to constantly publish to like Google Drive and stuff. So um, questions right now. I heard that Google, will Google throttle your reach if you if you post AI generated content on your website? Like how much do you need to edit the content? I've, I've heard that they would. Um, there's theories that they will. I, I would say they probably are going to start, but right now it's not. Not not from what we see. Like like I said, before really figuring out ChatGPT4, we were using ChatGPT3 and I tested it out on my wife's blog. And like I said, skyrocketed, but then it started and it all came down to user experience. The users were bouncing because the content wasn't, wasn't that good. So if you make good content, uh, that's really all that matters. If you focus on value, if you, if you can read your piece of content and be like, wow, I really enjoyed reading that and it's exactly what I wanted to share with my audience, then you're not gonna have any problems. Any other questions? What about load speed? You said website with load speed. What, what determines load speed? Um, so basically how fast the first viewport shows and all the assets from your website shows up, whether you're on a mobile device, tablet, desktop. I know, but what actually creates the load speed, like something special I, you built into my website? Just optimizing the code. Okay. Usually, most cases, it's because you have, like a lot of clients use a lot of like, like it, it, is everybody, anybody use WordPress here? Okay. WordPress, any other web websites, yeah. WordPress? Yeah. So WordPress is an open source platform where there's tons of plugins to do things. And the truth of the matter is you probably don't need all those plugins. And those plugins add load to your website. And um, 
either figuring out what plugins you don't need or optimizing how that code, like sometimes you have a plugin that's just handling backend functionality or something on just one page. Like let's just load it on that one page. We don't have to load the CSS and JavaScript for that plugin that's, that's only on one page, but it's being loaded on every page. So like that sort of stuff. Uh, op optimizing and serving WebP and next gen images is a big one. Um, so like these are the next gen images that load quicker for mobile devices. If you don't have that, that'll that'll dock you for a technical like scorecard for Google. And the, and the, the tool, if you're interested, um, just search PageSpeed Insights on uh, for Google. It, it uses their open source tool called Lighthouse, and it runs through a series of checks for your speed, your user experience. So like the the the, the um, cumulative layout shift that I was talking about, it's, it's acronym CLS. Um, LCP is called the large largest contentful paint. So the largest section with all the most stuff, if that's taking like 10, 15 seconds to load, like you're gonna get in trouble for that. So like you gotta try to get your entire page to load in pretty much under five seconds. And that, that'll give you a perfect score. Um, Lighthouse is gonna give you all that. It'll also give you a little bit of ADA checks on. It'll, it'll give you a scorecard on like how ADA compliant your website is. And it'll also give you an SEO scorecard too. Um, there's obviously, more SEO tools that are paid that like you could use to like get a more in-depth SEO analysis, but the Google PageSpeed Insights will give you a pretty good idea on where your website sits. You know, so uh, there's a lot of, I mean, this is your space. Oh yeah. I mean, so I'm not in the space as much as maybe some of you, know, maybe like Corey or, or Tom or whoever, you know, so you, you said a lot. So if we wanna, can we just step talk with you and say, hey, Andrew, kind of, you know, some of the subject, where do you start? Oh yeah, perfect. I mean, so perfect I mean, segue, so Bob. Like price points, you know. <laughs> okay. So we can talk price points, um, real, real but. Quick before you get to that. Cool. You, so you asked if we had websites, all of yep. websites. So do you take our current website and then throw it out? No, we don't throw it out. Well, oh, in, in in some in some in, it's gonna be crap. Hey, in some in some cases, yes, you do have to throw it out because it's cheaper to just start with a modern platform. Yeah, because like these modern platforms are really quick. Like you could just boom, you're good to go, ready to roll. But like I had a web firm that were marketing yep. that did it. Oh yeah, I'm sure it was so, a lot of money. Um, <laughs> I try to forget about it. Yeah. <laughs> To me, to me, it's just a sales. It's a basically hey, it's a long brochure. Oh yeah, that's what it is for our business. And um, well, you would take that and see what it looks like, and then go from there. Yeah. So we're not that. That's oh, yeah. kind of a good story for you. Oh yeah, and um, I mean, if you went through a good agency, there's a good chance that your website's structured really well. Um, okay. But the thing with agencies are, and this is where they a lot of agencies partner with us is like they're really good at helping you with your marketing and design and things like that. But like when it comes to technical and keeping the website going, um, yeah, they they'll try to sell you pay. Yeah, they either outsource it and, and you get really shoddy work or and really slow response times. Or they're they're like, yeah, well, we're, we're, we're good at PPC and we're good at this and we're good at that. Like this is what we're trying to, to, to sell you for our ongoing model. Whereas we're more of a we're, we're more of a dev shop. We're, we want to make sure your website's high performant, and we're actually finding out like as long as your website is fast and it's doing what your users want it to do, and you're fine, and like you know they're they're finding you and and you're answering their questions and they're booking appointments. It's really all that you need. You don't really need flashy designs, and you don't need all this extra stuff. Um, so that's where we've been really capitalizing is taking on websites from a technical aspect and like scaling with the business versus just having an awesome big, cool, awesome design website for, for like maybe a year and then it starts to, you know, go down because no one's taking care of it. Um, so we were talking about price points. We were talking about uh, how to get started. Well, first thing you guys should do is go to yodev.com forward slash the catalyst board and fill out that form. Uh, and then I'll get, I'll send you the slides. I'll send you my ChatGPT prompt doc. It's gonna be a template with hi highlighted on what to change with some instructions. And then I'm also gonna give you guys a free website audit. And then from there, we can really talk about price points um, because it, every website's a little different, but I will say that um, our, our typical like startup fees for like going in and fixing technical issues, it's anywhere from 1500 to 5K 
as like a startup fee. And then um, we have ongoing packages anywhere from a thousand to our, our biggest client pays us 20K a month. So it really depends on how much you scale and how much work you need as far as like, you know, um, from a consulting and dev partner. Um, and then, you know, if you just want to take it project by project and say, hey, let's just do this, let's just do that, we can also give quotes for per project. So like, if you just want to take care of this, this page speed issues and there might, and our reports are saying there's only a couple things that have to be fixed, we can scope out how long that would take and give you a quote for just those specific issues as well. Um, but yeah, and a, a really good starting point if you're interested in the SEO piece is the, the discovery report that I shared earlier. It's $750 and it's gonna give you a, a in-depth technical analysis, a opportunity analysis, which is where your competitors and all the opportunities that are online can show, and then a plan to execute, which you'll see the, the cost for us to, to work on an ongoing basis from consulting and implementation side of things and um, you know what, what, what to expect as far as that. So, so that's it. And again, my name is Andrew Hewitt. Um, yeah, I'm I'm happy to to talk, and I look forward to you know getting that getting you guys booked up for your free website audit so that we can give it. It it, it doesn't go obviously as deep as the SEO discovery report, but you'll get an idea. You'll get a scorecard, and then you'll get a meeting with me to talk about it, just to kind of you know. So basically, we just kind of put that in the system, and then it it's just going to generate. The website audit? Yeah. Uh, no, that, I'm, we're going to physically do it. Okay. Uh, we have tools that we pay for that are really expensive and things like that that we're going to utilize to analyze your website, um, and then we're going to talk about it. It'll be in a little little brief, like maybe three or four slide deck that we can talk about. And um, if you want to move forward with some of the fixes we recommend, or you want to move forward with an SEO discovery report, or however we want to move forward, um, we can discuss it then. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Oh, sorry. Uh, one last question. So I'm I haven't done this yet, but I will be building like my personal website before you go to that Cool. Do you guys do design too, or would it be something where I should get a design first before and before like going down the SEO trail and then bring it to you and say like how should I we set did. this up for success from the start? We have UX UI designers on the team. So we do offer design. The one thing that we don't offer is like branding. So like logo, brand mission, messaging. Um, we're not gonna be able to help you find your target customer, um, but like from a web UX, whether it's a, a one-page website, uh, an enterprise website, or a web application, like where users log in, like we will design the user experience and develop it for you. So if I came to you with like a domain name, a logo, like a branding packet, basically some color schemes, yeah. yep. and like maybe two or three example websites. You're saying you that's that's what, that's actually you hit it on the money right there. We do like we offer UX UI design. We don't call it web design anymore. Um, like it technically is web design, but uh, yeah, you user experience, user interface design. That's uh, that's what we that's what we do. So you told us your why. What's the nature of the name of the company? Uh, my name. So um, my parents are separated. And there was some laziness with the birth certificate and my name was Young Hewitt. Um, so I didn't know what to do and I was like, you know, at first we were Yo Digital Agency and that's when we were sort of offering everything. And then uh, I needed to rebrand because there was a Yo Staffing Agency. I don't know if you are familiar, but if you searched Yo Digital, like Yo Staffing Agency, it was like a national brand that staffs like, I forget what it was, like some kind of corporate employee kind of staffing thing. And I was like, oh, I can't do this. Like, I need people to be able to search my brand. And then I changed it to Yo Dev, and I got a branding expert to help me put some some assets together. And yeah, that's Yo Dev. So Y O Young Hewitt Dev. That's that's where the Yo comes from. <laughs> and it's actually it's you know since it's only five characters, it's really easy to find. And I if you search even without the H, I'm pretty sure we still come up in some way, shape, or form. So like that was also another part. I wanted uh, part. I wanted it to be really easy to find um, with social handles, websites, things like that. Any additional questions? Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. Awesome. That was great. Awesome. Was really good. I look forward to uh, speaking with you and um, you know talking about some stuff. I, I our our biggest thing that we we love is is partnering with our clients. So like I like meeting meeting with the clients coming up with ideas and then having those touch points along the way to where we're not just your, you know, hey, 
this is fix this or change this. Like I, I, I like to be a part of the process and I can offer a lot from even even from the sales perspective with my sales background and, and how to you know how to land appointments with, with high ticket like you know I used to meet with like DOT people and like people that are gonna buy big concrete like that whole process of like how to figure out your sales process I can help with it and I do have some some consultants that specialize in like building out sales pipelines and things like that. So um, I have a wide range of professionals in my network that kind of specialize in every little area where our area is just dev, tech, IT, um, that sort of thing. Uh, and now, you know, SEO is just something all of our clients ask for, so we had to get good at it. So that's, that's another thing. We're agile and we, and we pivot a lot. So um, whatever you need, we sort of become what you need.